Um, as you know, narcolepsy has been known for a long time. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting disease which had allowed neurologists in recent uh, 10 years to make a lot of progress on the understanding of the brain, uh, including, um, as you can see, uh, in very good uh, journal. Uh, narcolepsy was described in 1880 uh, in France, in Montpellier, and uh, it's uh, associated uh, excessive daytime sleepiness, uh, cataplexy, sleep paralysis, and hypnagogic hallucination. Uh, let's face it, everybody can have hypnagogic hallucination if they are sleep deprived, and sleep paralysis uh, is fairly common because 3% of the general population will experience it without any very significant health problem. Um, the prevalence is fairly low. It's one in 5,000 subject, and that's about all around the world, maybe except in Japan. Um, as you can see, narcolepsy is between amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and multiple sclerosis for its uh, prevalence. So it's a disorder that neurologists should see on a regular basis. Uh, one new symptom has been added in the recent past is disturbed nocturnal sleep, and that's with the discovery of what's happened in the brain. We should add an extra symptom is that if you are narcoleptic, you are going to increase your weight, and a lot of narcoleptics will become obese during their life. Um, the prevalence, as you see, excessive daytime sleepiness is seen in 100% of the subject, and cataplexy is probably the major symptom to recognize the narcolepsy. And the, there is a variation in the different statistics based on what is called narcolepsy, and that's an issue. Uh, <coughs> the diagnosis, uh, only 15% of the subject have all the symptoms. And once again, the recognition of cataplexy is really very critical for the diagnostic of narcolepsy. Uh, there are tests which are done. A lot of emphasis has been placed on the multiple sleep latency test. Recent data show that maybe we should not be as strong on this test as we were, let's say, five years ago. Uh, there are when does narcolepsy occur? It occurs at birth in very rare cases. As you can see, most of the narcoleptics present their symptoms in the second decade, between 10 and 20 years of age. Uh, the most important symptom is undoubtedly cataplexy. And cataplexy are uh, defined and was very well defined already at the beginning of the 20th century as a brief uh, muscle weakness attack. And they are induced by essentially emotion. Laughter is the number one inducer, but anger, amusement, and sometimes something really uh, a problem, sexual intercourse. Um, it may impact part of the body, but usually what happens is the subject feels knee-buckling. It can be a complete attack, and the subject will fall on the floor, but most commonly it will be a partial attack where the subject, you will see, drop head, drop the uh, arms, or sometime make a joke and start having shivering on the muscle of the face. Most of the attack are bilateral, rarely unilateral, and they are short. Most commonly, they last less than two minutes. Another issue also, during a cataplectic attack, you have a complete disappearance of the deep tendon reflexes. Uh, and you can see the triggering factors uh, are uh, the most common, laughter, feeling of amusement, elation, uh, something which surprises the subject will induce an attack. During the attack, if you monitor the muscle, if you do an electromyogram, as you can see on the slide, 
On one side, you have no muscle tone. On the other side, you have re complete return of muscle tone. And actually, you don't see very well, but you have an abolition of the H reflex, which is a monosynaptic reflex. And you have an abolition of the deep tendon reflex. We have a dog colony, and uh, that's uh, something that a lot of people like to come at Stanford to look at. You see this dog get all excited if you give them food and they have a cataplectic attack. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you, can we have the video? Uh, a cataplectic attack, as you know, uh, San Francisco is a multi-ethnic uh, population. <laughs> and the father always know to make a joke and actually she, uh, the daughter tried to hit him And that's a complete attack. And you can see she's conscious, she laughs, but she has a complete disappearance of muscle tone. And if you try to do a uh, deep tendon reflex, there is a complete abolition. The real important new stuff have been the discovery of the genetic and familial aspect and also the discovery of the hypocretin system in the brain. Next slide. So it's in Japan that Honda and his colleague initially looked at HLA, human leukocyte antigen, and say 100% of our narcoleptic have HLA-DR2. Now we don't talk about HLA-DR2 because we know that there are two different HLA behind that type. And unfortunately, the Japanese, uh, because of their isolation, their narcoleptic, have two genes who always move in the same time. When you look at a polyethnic population like at Stanford, where we have black, we have Caucasian, we have Asian, we find out that there was a different gene which was seen in all of them. Next slide. And as you know, you have, if you look at the short arm of the sixth chromosome, that's where the HLA is located, the gene of the HLA. And if you do the mapping, you have DR and D DQ. And actually, as you can see, it's very close, but it's not DR, it's DQ which is involved. And uh, the classic narcoleptic will have this presentation. And one other thing that I want to emphasize is they will all have DQ1, beta 1, O602. And you have DQ beta 1, O603, O604, O601, but it's DQ beta 1, O602, which is the favoring gene for narcolepsy. I emphasize favoring. And it's the most common association, and when you look at many, many places, many countries, and we receive blood from all over the world, uh, including Brazil and Portugal, and all, let's say, 92% of the subject with narcolepsy will present DQ beta 1 or 602, not 100%. And one other thing which is uh, a problem is uh, if I look at you, 11% of you have that gene. However, the frequency of narcolepsy is 0.05%. So there is a big discrepancy, meaning that 11% of you have a risk factor. It's like cancer, it's like diabetes. You have a certain gene, it gives you a risk. It doesn't give you the illness, okay? And we know perfectly that it's important to look for HLA-DQ beta 602, but it doesn't make the diagnosis of narcolepsy because 11% of the general population is going to have it. The second big discovery happened in between 1999 and 2000. It was a discovery of a new system on the brain, which is called the hypocretin system. Okay? And the hypocretin are, are uh, 
come out from a very small nucleus, which have about 50 to 70,000 neurons, and they are located in the lateral hypothalamus.